a.k.a. Shalawam Shalawamach, and of course, call Haloyim, Yahweh, Ba'ashim, Yahweh Shai, Ba'ashim, Chalkudash, double honors to the apostles, the elders, the great millstone, and the rule, and teach well. Peace and Shalawam to the Akim out there and the elect, which consists of the men, women, and children selected to make it out of here from the coming nuclear destruction, all right? I'm the brother Zayan all of the DC camp, coming at you with another video. And as you can see here, Salaki, let me um go ahead and move that out the way. As you can see here, I'm going to start off with, uh, you know, 1 Corinthians 14 and 1. As you can see at the top, it says prophecy, a superior gift. Why am I going into this? Because as you can see, as of lately, just follow me. You see these videos like this? Let me see, like, let me uh, move it so you can see it. All right. And bear with me as I adjust the screen. All right. Lately, uh, different brothers have been going um, on IUIC's new stance concerning the mark of the beast. Okay, all right. Now they're saying that the chip is the mark of the beast. When before, you know, they would make mockery saying that that's not. You see, all right. Like the apostle Tar said, they have a lot of explaining to do. All right, because they have countless videos when they would say that the RFID chip. He, he, he remember Nate was like RFID chip. Where's my dog and all this other all this other crap? You remember the videos and stuff like that? Maybe you can go buy some land for you. Remember them statements? Now they're changing their stance on all right the chip being the mark of the beast. All right, as you can see here, another um, you remnant say one four four. Of course, the elder apostle Hars. You can still be delivered if you take the MOTB and many more things. You know you done effed up. I U I C I U I through C. Okay, GMS rebuked the tempter, the, the two, uh, GMS rebuked the tempter two, Salakia, all right, the beloved brother, all right, all right, you can see multiple brothers going on this, and I'm bringing this scripture out again, all right, because that chip deals with prophecies. As a matter of fact, let me open up another tab, and bear with me, you know, uh, this is Revelation 13, right, now this is Revelation 13 and verse 16. All right, and it says, and he calls of all, both small and great, rich and poor, free and bond, to receive a mark in their right hand or in their forehead. I'm going to get this. Now, of course, the majority of Akim already know this. They've read this in and out. But we're going to keep reading in and out until we're blue in the face, until, until it comes to pass. Okay? All right, we're going to keep reading this until it comes to pass. And it's funny because... I believe the apostles and elders um, have mentioned it a long time ago. We keep saying it over and over and over. Eventually, these people are going to believe it. Okay? And that's what we have been doing through the spirit and the power of Yahweh Bashim El Shah. We have stood our ground through the spirit. We keep teaching these things over and over and over. And before you know it, you watch the, war, the, the Lord Salakia work on the minds of these people. And all of a sudden, they start seeing it. Case in point. Uh, um, I, if I'm not mistaken, who is it? Zion Lex, okay, um, a dude that used to be an Old Testament. If I'm, I, I forgot which one it is. A, a dude that used to be um, Old Testament only Israelite. Now he's starting to believe on Yahweh Shai. I think the apostles brought that out. That the more and more he tried to not believe in the Messiah, all of a sudden he can see the Messiah more and more and more. And you know. Part of that is the spirit of Yahweh Hashem El Shai working on the prophets that constantly keep teaching over and over and over and over and drown this world out of their lies with the truth. You see, it's a balance. We've been drowned out with lies, right? So why can't you be drowned out with truth, right? Let me, as a matter of fact, open up another tab before I go back. You know what I want? All right, now this is uh, 2 Corinthians 10 and verse um, verse 4. For the weapons all right, of our warfare are not carnal because this is war. They spread lies all over the planet Earth, and we've been subject to that. And we've been what? Inheriting lies the whole entire time until the Spirit had woke us up. Okay? It woke us up through the men, all right, through the prophets. That's how it works. Men are the ones who wake you up. Okay? It's no such thing as uh, you say. You have some guys that just say, "I just woke up on my own," and they, and they know they're lying. They heard it from somewhere. They heard it from somebody, but they don't want to give that person the credit through the spirit of Yahweh Shai. Okay, 
It says, um, for the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty through the Most High to the pulling down of strongholds. They're mighty through Yahweh Shai to the pulling down of strongholds. Okay, so a physical weapon can pull down the strongholds, and we're going to get what the strongholds are. A gun itself, you go shooting at the people, next thing you know, you get shot and you're dead. You go stabbing the people with a knife, next thing you know, you get shot and you're dead. You get thrown in jail and you're done. That's the end of your story. Okay, the Lord already said, wait ye upon me. So if you do anything carnal, that's your ass anyway. All right, the carnal mind is enmity with the Heavenly Father. So nothing carnal can work. All right, so what are these strongholds? It's going to tell you in verse 5. It says, casting down imaginations and every high thing that exalted itself against the knowledge of Yahweh Bashem was shy. See, that's what the strongholds are. It's the imaginations and every high thing that exalted itself against the knowledge of Yahweh Bashem was shy. And we can only do that with the spirit. All right, remember the Holy Spirit is aka also known as the spirit of truth. Okay? We can only do that with the, we fight with the spirit of truth. Okay, on our side. Okay? That's the only way. That's our only weapon of this warfare and we are at war. Lies have actually torn down a nation. Lies have torn down a nation. When you lie to a people and tell them that they're not who they are, okay, and they grew up through generation and generation and generation and think that they're somebody else and not who they are, look what it, look what it has done to a people. And those are just words. So if we can flood, uh, um, if they can flood the world with lies, the balance is we can flood the world with truth. You see? Because somebody say just because you say it over and over doesn't make, make it true. But it is the truth. All right, I mean, and we're just getting that uh, balance of it. We're flooding the world with truth, and the more and more it goes on, the more and more you'll see it. And we're going to get into that too. All right, we're going to get into that aspect too, because we're going, we're, we're saying it over and over and over, we're speaking prophecy over and over and over. But guess what? Prophecy is actually coming to pass. That's the difference. Casting down imaginations and every high thing that exalted itself against the knowledge of Yahweh Hashem Shai and bringing into captivity. Every thought to the obedience of Yahweh Shai. And that's what we do with the spirit of truth. Okay? That's our weapon. All right? Now let's get um, a word in there in the Greek. Since you have people that say we don't study the Greek. A reckoning, computation, a reasoning. Such as is hostile to the Christian faith. A judgment decision such as consequence passes. So the correct one will more so be... Number two, which will line up, topic two, which will line up with the strongest definitions of what? Imagination or thought. Or thought. What type of thought? A thought that is what? A reasoning, which is a thought, such as is hostile to the Christian faith or the Israelite faith. So it's a thought or reasoning that is against the Israelite faith. And that is what we cast down. And we can only cast that down through the word. Something physical cannot do this, all right? And we stress the point on that. Now, let me go back to um, Revelation, okay? All right, Revelation um, 13 and 16. And he calls up all, both small and great, rich and poor, free and bond, to receive a mark in their right hand or in their forehead. And this is how we fight, see? We're constantly fighting. This is our war. This is our war, okay? This is our weapon in, in this warfare, all right? And it says, and that no man might buy or sell save he that had the mark or the name of the beast or the number of his name. And guess what? You have these different people now, of these different groups like IUIC who was against it. Now they're saying that the chip is the mark of the beast in a roundabout way. You see that? All right. Again, like the apostle R said, they have a lot of explaining to do. But let's go back. To this, 1 Corinthians 14 and 1, prophecy a superior gift. Follow after charity and desire spiritual gifts. So it is it's beautiful to follow after charity. When you go back to the 13th chapter, that we outside of us prophesying, we do need to have what? That brotherly love and kindness, which is charity, alms. Okay? But with, within that, you know, within that alms is also what? Even in giving alms is still what? Prophecy. Us brothers going out there on the highways and hedges prophesying all right, and showing love to the elect, that's still an alms. That's an alms deed. Okay? 
Prophecy is superior gift. Follow after charity and desire spiritual gifts, but rather that ye, that ye may prophesy. You see, but rather that ye may prophesy. Okay, because guess what? Prophecy, matter of fact, let me keep going. For he that speaketh in an unknown tongue speaketh not unto men, but unto the Most High, for no man understandeth him. So that whole, how do I, you know, that they do in the church, nobody knows what, what that is. That's not edifying. Okay? And that's not speaking in, well, that's speaking in a demonic tongue. All right? But that's not speaking in tongues as far as what people think it is. Speaking in tongues means speaking in languages. Maybe that's a demonic language that they're speaking in the church. All right? It says, but unto the Most High, for no man understandeth it. And that's another thing. If we knew full-fledged Hebrew, and we just... Uh, um, and we do know and we do know the Hebrew because we study the Hebrew, all right. But I'm saying, you know, from captivity, we've been made to what? Learn English. So our main language is English or Spanish or French or wherever you're from. That's your main language. You've lost the Hebrew, okay? All right. So if we were to just go out there and speak Hebrew to the people, they wouldn't know what we're talking about. You see? So we have to go into the English now, since that's the main language or whatever main language of your region, and then teach you, and then jump back and forth from the Hebrew to edify, all right? Because you have people out there that say, well, why don't you read the Hebrew? We do read the Hebrew, but you wouldn't understand it, all right? It says, how be it in the spirit he speaketh mysteries. Verse three, but he that prophesieth speaketh unto men to edification and exhortation and comfort and that's the reason why we must prophesy okay all right it's it's beautiful to go into the commandments and show our people their transgressions we always do that but the other aspect of it is what that we have to prophesy and tell people the things that's to come and what we need to do and then stay on a path to that point you see all right you're telling somebody hey, get off drugs Stop being adulterous, stop being normal. Great. You're supposed to. We're supposed to. But on top of that, we're supposed to prophesy what? And prophesy speaking on to men to edification, exhortation, and comfort. All right? Because we know that, hey, all these dangerous things are coming. All right? But guess what? If we continue to have faith and call on the name of Yahweh and the name of his son Yahweh Shai, and we have that faith until the end will be delivered from those said perils. Okay? All right, matter of fact, what is that? Um, almost said it in the spirit. The whole verse almost. Let me get that in the Apocrypha, right? So that's uh, 2 Ezra 9. 2 Ezra 9 and verse, um, uh, verse 5. For like as all that is made in the world have a beginning and an end, and the end is manifest. Yes, the end... Esau is the end of the world, and Jacob is the beginning of it that followed. His kingdom right now, his rulership, we're in the time of the end, okay? Even so, the times also of the highest have plain beginnings and wonders, uh, and wonder and powerful works and endings and effects and signs. That's why we see all these signs in the heavens, okay? All right, letting us know that we are close. You, the brothers are starting to see more chariots now, fleets. Okay, you, um, the brothers in New York all right, showed the fleets of chariot. And guess what? Brothers here. The brother, uh, the beloved brother Dequar in the camp, he happened to go outside and he, he you, know, the, you know how it'd be. You know how it'd be when you just happen to look up. The Lord always makes you look up at his chariots. You know, sometimes it can be one chariot in the sky. You come outside and look directly to it. It's not like you're looking for it either. You just go boom and you look directly at it. What is that? So the brother went outside and he looked directly up and it was the fleet of chariots like the brothers had in New York. And he um, he filmed it and showed the rest of the bros. All right. So those are the signs. We're in the signs of the end. Okay. In verse 7, and everyone that shall be saved and everyone that shall be saved or delivered, because nobody's delivered right now. Nobody's saved right now. It says, every and everyone that shall be saved and shall be able to escape by his works and by faith whereby ye have believed, shall be preserved from the said perils. Perils is troubles. So we know that in prophecy, troubles are coming. Troublesome times are coming. Jacob's trouble. Okay? But he shall be saved out of it. Talking about the elect. 
Jacob's trouble, a time like never before, is coming. Daniel's the 12th chapter, right? So prophecy lets us know that perils are coming. But if we keep the faith and the works, okay, to the best of our ability, okay, we'll be what? Preserved from those said perils, as is written. And shall see my salvation, my deliverance in my land. And within my borders, for I have sanctified them for me from the beginning. The elect have always been cleansed and chosen from the, from the start. Okay? But like, I, like, I, like the scriptures have said, if you have faith, you shall be preserved from those said perils to come. Okay? But that's just it. We have to prophesy of those said perils to come. We don't want it. You don't want it just to sneak up on you and you be a part of the uh, prophecy, like the uh, elder Kasap in our camp says. He says, you don't want to be, you want to see the prophecy. You want to be a part of it. Now, obviously, you get what he's saying. We're all going to be a part of the prophecies that's going to happen. But what he's saying is that you don't want to be a part of the two-thirds that's getting their ass handed to them. You want to be the ones that's in the back laughing at the two-thirds, laughing at the heathen. You don't want to be that. You want to be the prophecy of you, a uh, uh, um, famine, you going through a famine and uh, cannibalism, you eating people, okay? Okay? Uh, you getting tortured. You don't want to go, you don't want to go through that, man. Okay? All right? Let me read it again. It says, uh, shall be preserved from the said perils and shall see my salvation in my land and within my borders for I have sanctified them from me from the beginning. All right, let me go back to this again and close that out. Prophecy is superior gift. Again, follow after charity comes stressing the point and desire spiritual gifts, but rather that ye may prophesy. Now, prophecy is important because it's only a matter of time, okay? It's only a matter of time before it actually starts happening, and it will happen. Though it tarry, wait for it. It will happen, Okay? All right, we, we're talking about the chip. We're talking about World War III. It's only a matter of time before it actually happens. It's going to come. So what are you other groups talking about? Are you talking about prophecy? You should be talking about prophecy to the people, not just the commandments, but also prophecy. Prophecy is the spirit of Yahweh Shai. You, you should be speaking Yahweh Shai, all of him, not just the commandments and stuff like that, and the history and the laws. Speak about prophecy and what we must do to maintain on the right, righteous path until that time. Because we have to stay on that straight and narrow. I'm playing with the word straight, meaning that straight gate, but also straight in the, in the sense of we got to be on that direct path. We have to be on that straight and narrow, okay? And what must we do all the way up until that point? Because we don't want to fall off and then that point comes to us and we get destroyed. These, these are the things we must teach. Now, this is he, uh, Salakia Habakkuk. Um, this is Habakkuk 2. No, no, no. No, yeah, Habakkuk 2 and verse um, 3. It says, for the vision is yet for... Matter of fact, verse 1. I will stand upon my watch and set me upon the tower and will watch to see what he will say unto me and what I shall answer when I am reproved. And Yahweh Shai answered it and said, Write the vision. Now, vision is talking about prophecy. Okay? Write the vision. The Hebrew word there is a ha, a za, a wa, and a na. Chazawan. Chazawan. Okay? Vision. See? Vision, oracle, prophecy. Vision as title of book of prophecy. Okay, oracle vision. Okay, a sight. That's how another way you know how being called a seer, one who sees the visions, was another word for what? A prophet. Okay, even this, the vision deals with prophecy. Chazawan. All right, and it says, we go back up, and the Lord asked me and said, Write the vision and make it plain upon tables that he may run that readeth it. Okay, let's get the uh, different Bibles. NLT, then the Lord said to me, write my answer plainly on tablets so that a runner can carry the correct message to others. That basically, he may run that readeth it. 
the men of the Lord, as you see out there teaching, we ran with this word once we have received it. You see? I just wanted to get that for that um, translation. Verse 3, for the vision is yet for an appointed time. For the Now we know what vision is. Chazawan, right? For the prophecy is yet for an appointed time. Okay? But at the end, it shall speak. Now let's go into the word speak. Because we know what vision is. It's prophecy. So how can a prophecy speak? Is it talking about actually voices? All right. At that point, how can a prophecy, how can the fact that the, the chip is the mark of the beast start speaking? Let's go into this word. Because starting with our apostles, all right, on down, they've always taught us to go into our words. It shall speak. The Hebrew there is a pa, a wa, and a ha. Pawach. Pawach. Okay. It says uh, to breathe, blow, to cause, to exhale, to exhale, to lock it, or breathe, to puff, paint for it, to blow, blast. Blow with the breathe, it says blow with the breath of, or air, hence to fan, to utter, to kindle, to scald, blow upon, break, puff, bring into a snare, speak, utter. Okay? Basically what? Come into effect. It's going to breathe. It's going to exist. All right. Because when you go into the heavenly father's name, his name is what? Uh, Yahweh. He is. He exists. And when you go on further into Hawa, it means to breathe. Okay. Come into effect. Okay. I said, that's, that's what speak is. Blow with the breath or air. Hence to fan, to utter, to kindle. All right. To the end, it's going to kindle. It's going to start. It's going to actually happen. Okay, let me see if there's any uh, additional. Mm -mm. Let me see. Let me go to a. Um, let me go to another one. All right. The vision is is for a future time. It's a pointed time. It describes the end, and it will be fulfilled. If it seems slow in coming, wait patiently, for it will surely take place. It will not be delayed. Sometimes you got to know what the scripture is talking about. That's why we say in the, uh, in the end it shall speak, meaning it's going to come to pass. All right. So even when you go into the word, you got to understand the word because by looking at it, you wouldn't think it would say come to pass. You have to go into it with the spirit. When you kindle something, you start in something. That means it's happening, right? You see? So it said, wait patiently for it will surely take place. It will take place. All right. It will not be delayed. It says, and not lie, though it tarry, wait for it, because it will surely come. Okay, it will not tarry. So it's only a matter of time before the prophecies actually happen. What prophecy? The RFID chip. Okay? The RFID chip. Well, I looked at this on my phone. All right, it's, it's, um, I pulled it up the same exact words. I put RFID chip 2022. I got some of the same links on my phone that's on here some of them like microchips and humans consumer friendly app or new you see that right here chip shortage to impact rfid uh, tag sales now right here microchips in humans okay that's that revelation 13 and 16 okay that it has to he calls of all both small and great rich and poor free and bond to receive a mark in their right hand or in their forehead okay See that? This is September 8th, 2022. All right? We've been talking about it from our apostles on down for years. The apostles even longer. Okay? Going back to the 90s and things of this nature when they were speaking on it. Probably the, uh, the late 80s. Okay? Sp when Apostle R and them were speaking, or actually speaking on the chip. Okay? All right? Before Alex Jones and all these people. Okay, in these different movies that were coming out back then. They had the chip in that movie uh, with Denzel Washington and uh, Russell Crowe. What's that? Uh, Virtuosity. Look that movie up. Uh, Virtuosity with um, Denzel Washington and Russell Crowe. Denzel Washington pulled out a chip and it looked exactly like the chip you see today. Okay? Alright? Been speaking about this for years and guess what? You see it coming to pass. Alright? So... You ones out there that think that the RFID chip is not the mark of the beast, you have to reevaluate your thinking. All right? We've been talking on it 
you see it coming to pass is in your face. The things that we speak about eventually happens. So the things that you're speaking about, is it happening? Is it happening? What prophecy of these different groups, what prophecy are you speaking about that's actually happening right now? Prophecy wise, because you have to prophesy. Let me get um, Deuteronomy 18. Deuteronomy 18, all right, and 15. The Lord thy power raise up unto thee a prophet, which says Yahweh Shai, from the midst of thee of thy brethren, like unto me, unto him shall ye hearken. According to all that thou desires of the Lord, thy power and horb, in the day of the assembly, saying, Let me not hear again the voice of the Lord my power, neither let me see this great fire any more that I die not. And Yahweh Shai said unto me, They have well spoken that which they have spoken. I will raise them up a prophet from among their brethren, like unto me, and will put my words in his mouth. See, the Lord, when the Lord came on the scene, he spoke the Heavenly Father's words, man. So by listening to him, you are listening to the Heavenly Father. It says, uh, when he says he's going to save you, the Heavenly Father's going to save you through him. Okay? It says, and he shall speak unto them. That's what these people, I don't, I don't, I don't understand that. Matter of fact, he said, he said that. What is that, John? He said the, uh, let me, let me see that. He said he speak uh, my words, the Father. Let me see. My words, let me see. Let me see. My, uh, where is that? I speak. Let me, that's why we got to Google, right? Let me see, because they have Jesus, right? Speak my father's, let me see, father's words. John 12 and 49, let's go, let's rock with it, all right? 12 and 49, right? And it says, all right, uh, verse 48. Matter of fact, verse 47, let's get it. And if any man hear my words and believe not, I judge him not, for I came not to judge the world, but to save the world. He that rejoiceth me, and receiveth not my words, or it's like he rejecteth me, and receiveth not my words, have one that judgeth him. The word that I have spoken, the same shall judge him in the last day. For I have not spoken of myself, but the Father which sent me. He gave me a commandment, what I should say, and what I should speak. Okay? And I know that his commandment is life everlasting. Whatsoever I speak, therefore, even as the Father said unto me, so I speak. So everything the Lord said when he came on the scene, it was from the Heavenly Father, Yahweh. When the Lord said, believe on me, yeah, he's really saying to believe on him because it was sanctioned by the Father. To believe on Yahweh Shai is believing on um, the Heavenly Father. Yahweh, the Heavenly Father, Yahweh. Point blank, period. Okay, and you got people saying, oh, it's, it's no other savior but the heavenly father. It's no, it, it, that's right. There is no other savior but uh, um, but the heavenly father because it's, guess what? It's the heavenly father's program. And under the heavenly father, he uses uh, different entities to do his will. So he's going to use Yahweh Shai to save. He's the savior because he's the ultimate controller of it, but he's using certain instruments to do it. Case in point. Is he, uh, he's the ultimate giver of prophecy, but is he out there or is he using his men to do it? He's using his men to prophesy. He's not doing it. He's doing it through, he's doing it through his men. Okay. But he physically is not doing it because he doesn't have to. He's the king. Okay. All right. It says, um, we go back. Oh, I command him. Oh, yeah. I, verse 18, I will raise them up a prophet from among their brethren like unto thee, and I will put my words in his mouth, and he shall speak unto them all that I shall command him. And it shall come to pass that whosoever will not hearken unto my words, which he shall speak in my name, I will require of him. Of him. So Yahweh Shai spoke the words of the Heavenly Father Yahweh. So he was supposed to listen to Yahweh Shai because it's listening to the Heavenly Father Yahweh. Period. I mean, it's not hard. It's his program. That's why he's the only savior, meaning there's no other equal on his level or above 
That's the Savior. He's the Savior. See, people thought that the other gods can deliver them. Remember, that's why the Lord said, there's no other gods beside me. You see? The other gods have their own, there are uh, other gods and stuff that you worship under them. Okay? You know, uh, uh, think about it. Them, uh, um, people that believe in Satan, do they not worship Satan? Do they not also worship his demons underneath of them? Baphomet, they got the Baphomet when they do witchcraft. So, of course, they know about Baphomet, but do they also know about Satan? Yeah, they worship worshiping both of them. You see that? So, it's the same thing on the right-hand side. The Heavenly Father got his system. It has uh, him, and he has what? Uh, Yahweh Shai. And that's it. You don't worship the angels. You worship him and Yahweh Shai. You see? Because he said to. All right? And it says, um... But the prophet which shall presume to speak a word in my name, which I have not commanded him to speak, or that shall speak in the name of other gods, even that prophet shall die. You see that? All right, so if you speak in false prophecy, or you speak in the name of other gods, you're going to die. Okay? See that? Speak a word in my name, which I have not commanded him to speak. So if it's a false prophecy, you're in danger of being put to death. And you will be put to death unless you repent. And if thou say in thine heart, how shall we know the word which the Lord have not spoken? How are we going to know what the Lord didn't speak then, right? Verse 22, when a prophet speaketh in the name of the Lord, if the thing follow not, nor come to pass, that is the thing which the Lord have not spoken, but the prophet have not, slacky, but the prophet have spoken it presumptuously, thou shalt not be afraid of him. You see? And guess what? We've been speaking about this. Mark of the Beast, the MOTB, for decades, start when the apostles on down, for decades, years, and as you can see, it's being manifested. You see stuff like, going back to this, microchips in humans, okay, all right, then it says the microchip implants that let you pay with your hand, April 10th, 2022, remember this is September 8th, that's this month, okay, all right. Let me see. Keep going. Elon Musk. That's it. This is the one that's in your forehead. Neuralink hopes to put brain chips in humans. You see, right? And on my phone, like I said, it has different um, it has different articles than what you see here. They also show a YouTube video. All right, for the chip. Now let's go here, and this is the YouTube video. Now I believe a brother had uh, talked about this. Okay, have brought this up. And I actually watched it. You know, my, my rib said that she saw a brother talk about this particular movie. And that's why we watched the movie. Okay. All right. You see this is September uh, 2021. It says implanted trailer. There was a trailer for 2022. It came out in 2022. Okay, this year. Lex now back online. Good morning, Sarah. I need to create a clinical profile for you, Sarah. Which is more powerful, love or hate? I am actually an optimist, so uh, I like to think love. Make efforts to live a low stress lifestyle and cultivate relationships. Yeah, you wanna throw in a boyfriend too? If you help me, I will take care of you. You're now under my control. Go to 47 West 13th Street. If the scientist doesn't comply, you must kill her. Well done, Sarah. I always get what I want. I have you under my control. Go now. See that? See one of the words say microchip implant? Brain. Brain, that's the brain implant, right? If the scientist doesn't comply, you must kill her. Well done, Sarah. Let's see. I always get what I want. I have you under my- Microchip, there you go. Look at that. Look at that. KKKKK, all that crap. Microchip implant, real quick. You see that? You see? All right. The Lord is putting the spirit out there to let you know that this is the MOTB, man. All right, it's only a matter. It's only but so much talking we can do before the prophecy comes to pass. 
as thus saith the scripture. So again, what are these other groups prophesying? Because what you're prophesying got to come to pass is more than just the Lord coming back. That's the ultimate. That's a prophecy. That and yes, it's very true. We want the Lord to come back, but there are some things in between that that we have to talk about, and discuss before that point. Some perils that we must go through, and this is a peril. If you don't take this, you will die. So. What does that mean for the ones that's not going to take it? Us, the hopeful elect. At that point, are we going to die? No, because the prophecy, in prophecy, those that keep the will of the Father is going to be protected. All right? The name of the Lord is a strong tower. The righteous run into it and it's safe. There's also in prophecy, a revelation. I be thou faithful unto death and I will give thee a crown of life. See, we have... Other scriptures that tells us what to do during those times. But we got to talk about those times before the Lord comes back. Because we're going through that straight gate. All of us. See? So what are you teaching? You have to teach prophecy. We're teaching prophecy outside of everything else that's in the scriptures. We're teaching prophecy. And you see it happening. You can't talk about prophecy once it's already here, y'all. So you got to prophesy, okay, to warn the people before it gets here on what to do. Or their blood is going to be on, on your hands. What, they're going to get it and, and be like, oh, damn, I, I, I wish somebody would have told me. That's your fucking fault. All right? I've been doing what you asked me to do since day one. You destroyed my life. I haven't destroyed it yet, Sarah. There are things I could do to your mother. Oh, Commander, she dies. People. But that's but that's enough on that. You can actually see the movie. It was a good movie. I liked the movie. But hey, you know, like, and she was effed up. And well, you know, you, obviously from the previews, you can see she was effed up. So you can see the movie. Hey, if you listen to the word of the Lord, you wouldn't get effed up anyway because you wouldn't get it in your body. So you wouldn't have to worry about that. But it has to be taught. All right. So that, that's pretty much the point, you know, that's pretty much the point of this lesson is that, you know, eventually what we prophesy is going to come to pass, man. All right. So we need to prophesy. Point blank, period. Call Halayim, Yahweh, Ba'ashim, Yahweh, Shai, Ba'ashim, Rechach, Wadash. And as always, to the elect, double shalom.